we're going to start off today with just some wilting candy melts because they're the most common ones available. Let's pop some of those into our bowl. Alright, so my whole water is now boiling. Before I put in my candy melts, I'm going to take some shortening. And I like to put in my shortening about a tablespoon or so at a time. But like I said, there's no real exact measurement because in my experience, I seem to get different results out of different bags and different brands of your different candy melts. So I'm just going to take some of that shortening, I'm going to pop it into the bowl. And once that's completely melted, which shouldn't take long, we'll turn that heat off and we'll add our candy melts. All right, so you'll know that your shortening's done when it's completely clear. So regardless of what color it starts out as, whether it's clear or whether it's white, once it's melted, it should be completely clear. So I'm gonna turn my burner off now, completely off, because I wanna just control how much heat I've got in that bowl. I'm gonna get my spoon ready, and I'm gonna put about half of my bag of candy melts in. Perfect. So now I'm just gonna grab a cloth. Be careful of those stainless steel bowls because they can be quite warm. And I'm just gonna stir. As you're stirring, these candy melts are going to melt and that shortening's gonna help them because there's gonna be a bit of heat in the shortening. But chocolate and candy melts both melt on agitation. So if you don't keep them moving, it takes them a little bit longer to melt. Beautiful. So that's done and if you have a look at it as it comes off the spoon, look how beautiful and fluid that is. You're gonna have absolutely no problems dipping your candy melts or piping that or whatever you want to do with it. You do want to be careful not to over add your shortening. If you add too much shortening and it is a little bit of a by eye thing. So you want it to be a consistency that you can work with. But if you think it can make your life easier by making it super, super thin and getting a little bit more mileage out of your chocolate, what you'll actually end up with is chocolate that's too thin and you'll be able to see the cake pop through it. So you'll get the discoloration of your chocolate cake pop peering out through the colour of your candy melt and you don't want that. All right. So that's your candy melts done. Now whenever I'm dipping cake pops, I always put them in quite a narrow and tall container as you would have seen in a lot of my videos, which makes it just really easy to be able to dip your cake pops so you can get them in and out with no problems. If you're not gonna use those straight away or if you've got any leftovers, I always recommend storing them in Ziploc bags. Ziploc bags are fabulous because you can just pour it straight in, you flatten it out so it almost becomes like candy melt bark and seal it up. It keeps it away from the air because you do want your chocolate to be kept away from the air. The air will eventually dry it out after a week or so and it will make it stale, but it also affects the taste. You want to seal that bag up, you want to flatten your chocolate out, pop it in the cupboard and it's ready for you to melt another day. Alright, so I've brought that water right back up to the boil again and I'm going to show you the difference between the candy melts with shortening and the candy melts with no shortening so that you know exactly what I mean when I say thicker and thinner and you'll be able to see exactly the difference in consistency from that sneaky shortening trick. The water's boiling so once again I'm going to turn that stove right off and in go the rest of our candy melts. Not only do they not melt as fast because they don't have that additional heat in the shortening, there's also a little bit more risk that they're going to burn here because the shortening, for some reason, and I have no idea why, seems to protect them from burning, both in the microwave and when you melt them in the pan. All right, so the second bowl has melted and to the naked eye, it looks like it's melted just fine. So you can look at that there and it's not too bad. It's not too bad. If I tip the spoon, it kind of falls off in, I guess, little chunks or little globs. Sort of. <laughs> so it is definitely thicker. It still looks melted, but if you were to go dip a cake pop into that, it's probably gonna dip, but there's a good chance that the thickness of that candy melt is actually gonna suck the cake pop off your cake pop stick, and it's not going to work how you wanted it to. Going back to our initial one that had the shortening in it, you can see there just the difference in even just stirring it. But as I lift it up, the fluidity of which, it comes straight off that spoon. To the naked eye, not such a difference, but when you've got the two of them side by side, and when you're making a lot of cake pops, that shortening makes all the difference. So that sums up how you're gonna get your candy melts to that beautiful, smooth dipping consistency for your cake pops. So let's get that water boiling again, and I'm gonna show you how to melt and color white chocolate. 